You know, a couple years ago, I had this really great privilege of watching this really great movie called A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, starring Tom Hanks as Fred Rogers, this really popular children's entertainer from back in the day, who had this TV show called Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And basically, at a certain point in the context of the film, a journalist comes up to the Fred Rogers character and asks him what's the point of his TV show. In response to which Mr. Rogers says to him, well, the whole point of the TV show in a certain sense is to teach kids how to manage and regulate their emotions. And perhaps must suggest what's true for kids remains true for adults. So when you think about emotions in general, emotions are obviously meant to be a gift, right? And so we're called to change and transform the world in a really positive sort of way through our passion, through our vigor, through our emotions, happy or sad or whatever the case may be. At the same time, when it comes to difficult emotions, especially painful emotions like sadness or anger, obviously this can be challenging. And so to kind of frame the issue, I want to talk about this really famous gospel that you find in the gospel of Mark chapter 4, where Jesus Christ is in this boat with his disciples, and he's asleep in the midst of some storm. So, as you might recall, Jesus Christ, he gets into a boat with his disciples, he commands them to go to the other side, but then all of a sudden, again, they find themselves in the midst of some storm, as a result of which the disciples are freaking out. And so, basically, they rouse the Lord from sleep, they say to him, Lord, don't you care that we are perishing? And then he rebukes the storm. Peace be still. The storm is no more. Then he rebukes the disciples for their lack of faith. Now, something I've always found kind of interesting when it comes to this particular story is that when you look at the same version of the story that you find in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 8, it's the same story. So the same story of Jesus being asleep in the boat with his disciples, but with one key difference. And so basically, in the context of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus Christ rebukes his disciples for the lack of faith while the storm is still going on. And so just kind of picture the situation, right? The storm is raging, and basically what he says to him in the midst of the storm is, why are you worried? And so depending on how you look at it, it speaks to us to the fact that the peace of Christ, which is beyond all understanding, is supposed to persist in the midst of our most difficult storms, which in turn begs the question, how is this possible? St. Augustine addresses this particular issue by making a really important distinction between what he calls the press of troubles and this experience of feeling oppressed. And so basically what he says, just to kind of paraphrase, is that the press of troubles is basically the things we face throughout the course of our day in terms of problems, difficult circumstances, whatever the case may be. And the whole idea is that no matter who you are, no matter what your particular circumstances might be, there will always be the press of troubles, right? This is very much the pilgrim journey. And this whole point is that just because you're constantly being impinged upon by the press of troubles, whether externally or internally, it doesn't mean necessarily you need to feel oppressed. You know, Dr. Gregory Popchek further expounds upon this point by using a really cute analogy. So he says basically, just to paraphrase, imagine you're in a mall and you wave to a friend of yours, but your friend doesn't wave back. One way to interpret that experience is my friend is distracted, and so perhaps I have a sense of worry and concern for my friend. I make plans to call that friend later on. Another way to interpret that same situation, of course, is to say, well, look, my friend is no longer my friend. What a jerk for ignoring me. And so same situation, but different emotional response, right? So on the one hand, there is concern and worry for my friend. On the other hand, there is anger. And the whole point is that a lot of times we tend to kind of readily conclude that my particular situation made me feel this way or caused me to feel this way. We often forget about this intervening step of how I interpret a situation. Based on how I interpret my particular situation, I can feel one way or something completely opposite. Okay, now hold that thought and think about today's gospel, right? Again, a story of Jesus Christ being asleep in the midst of this boat, in the midst of this storm, right? And so what are the disciples experiencing? they feel wet, they feel confused, they feel tired perhaps, right? So they're in the midst of this really harrowing storm. At the same time, what's the reality? Jesus Christ is asleep in the boat, right? And so even though they might conclude from the external circumstances that Jesus Christ doesn't care, the fact of the matter is that he is with them and he's very much asleep in the boat. Now, even with that, you gotta make sure you interpret the thing correctly, right? So don't interpret Jesus Christ being asleep in the boat as being indifference, right? But instead, read into this image the sense of calm. Jesus Christ is calm. He's relaxed. He's not worried. And what's more, he's with me in the midst of my storm. And so therefore, the invitation implicitly is to take on the Lord's demeanor. I can be in the midst of the most difficult of storms, but the reality is I'm called to rise above my emotions, my perception based on my external circumstances, and realize the truth. Jesus Christ is always with me. He is always Lord. He is always Father. Even this particular situation is within the scope of his providential designs. And what's more, nothing can ever separate me from the love of Christ.
Okay, now at this point, perhaps I might end with two kind of final examples just to kind of drive the point home. And so Heather Kim, as you might know, is one of the co-hosts for this really popular podcast called Abiding Together, along with Michelle Benzinger and Sister Miriam James Highland. And basically, in the context of another podcast, Restore the Glory, Heather was recalling how she herself had made great strides in terms of her own personal relationship with Christ over the past couple of years. In response to which the question was posed to her, why? What happened to bring about this dramatic change, again, in your relationship with Christ? And basically, just to kind of paraphrase, what she said was, I stopped questioning. I stopped questioning my fundamental relationship with Christ. No small thing. We do this all the time. We constantly question God and our relationship with God. Is God real? Does he love me? Does he actually care? And we're kind of like hedging our bets, right? So if God isn't real or he's not going to come through for me, then I have kind of a backup plan. Or perhaps I leave the door open always to just exit my relationship with God completely. But the reality is any relationship of substance is predicated on trust, a deep abiding sense of trust. I trust in you. I trust in your love. I trust in our relationship. And no matter what, I will never, ever leave. And of course, what's true in our human relationships with other people is especially true when it comes to God. And so given all that, the invitation is to live deeply and habitually out of this deep sense of trust in God as Father, and then to see how your relationship with God doesn't just completely blossom. Okay, one final example, and I'll kind of end with this. And so back in the day, I happened to see this movie called Edge of Tomorrow, starring Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt. And it's a sci-fi film where Emily Blunt and Tom Cruise, they're soldiers fighting for Earth against an alien invasion, basically. And the plot of the movie basically revolves around the Tom Cruise character, being caught in this perpetual time loop. And so basically whenever he dies, the day starts over for him. And because it's a two hour movie, he dies like a lot, right? And so whenever he dies, he has to reintroduce himself to the Emily Blunt character. And it's kind of funny how it happens, right? So every time he comes to her, she's in the midst of this stretching routine, this exercise routine, and he always has to interrupt her. But because she doesn't know him initially, whenever he interrupts her, she's always annoyed. So she always abruptly gets up and says, yes, what do you want? Something like that. Anyways, for Tom Cruise, this time loop repeats over and over again throughout the course of the film until finally they achieve victory over the aliens, but not before Emily Blunt finally kisses Tom Cruise and then dies. But the day starts over again. And even though the Earth is finally liberated from the aliens, the primary concern on the part of the Tom Cruise character is that he wants to find the Emily Blunt character. So again, he finds her, he interrupts her exercise routine. She's annoyed and she gets up and says, yes, what do you want? And then the camera turns to Tom Cruise's character, and it's really beautiful. He doesn't say anything, but instead he just looks at her. And you can tell, just reading between the lines, like basically what he's thinking is like, you have no idea. You have no idea how much I've suffered and died for the world. And what's more, you have no idea how much I love you. Like, I, I love you so much. And here's the crazy thing. Even though you're kind of angry with me, even though you're kind of annoyed with me right now, you actually love me too. And that's just a fact. And so when the camera focuses on him, he has this big stupid grin on his face. He has tears in his eyes, but they're tears of joy because I'm finally in the presence of the one that I love. And with that, the movie ends. And I want to tell you, friends, like that's how Jesus Christ looks at you all the time. All the time he loves you, he rejoices in your presence. He's just thrilled to be with you. And so with that, I invite you all to, to have courage. Be brave. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust in his love. Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. And may God bless you all.